If I don't get something good on this next spin, I'm gonna be so upset. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm not having a fun time anymore. <laughs> Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna be starting on another reading vlog And this is going to be the backlist bonanza episode 2 So if you missed it at the end of last year I started doing this video series called the backlist bonanza where I read some books that have been sitting on my backlist for a long time I think this is a really good video series for me to work on this year because I tend to prioritize the new releases I get really excited about whatever is coming out in the new year and typically every single year the majority of the books that I read in any given year Year are books that published in that given year. And so I thought this year it would be really smart for me to try and get through a lot of the books that have been sitting on my backlist forever. So these books that I'm considering backlist books are any books that were published as recently as like a year ago. But the goal is just to get to books that have been sitting on my shelf for a long time that I just have no urgent need to pick up these books. I feel like that's what this video series is gonna be for. But instead of just, you know, selecting a few books off of my TBR to read for these videos, I thought it would be even more fun to have a spin the wheel choose which books I read for these videos and so I have loaded up this little spin the wheel with over 44 book titles on it I actually had a lot more books that were sitting on my backlist shelf but then as I was going through them some of the books I was thinking to myself like oh I don't really know if I want to read that or like oh if that got picked I wouldn't be very excited like I'm just not in the mood to read this anymore and then I was like why do I even still have these books and so very soon you can expect from me a book unhaul that's going to be including a lot of these books that I didn't even want to put on this spin the wheel in the first place. So all of these 44 books that I have on my spin the wheel, these are books that I'm still excited about reading. These are books that range in genre from thriller, mystery, like horror books, there's romance books, there's contemporary books, there's even some non-fiction on this. There's a few fantasy, like maybe one or two fantasy, like there's literally something in here for everyone. Some of these books have been sitting on my shelves for literally years, like we have Circe on here, and I know circe has been sitting on my shelves since probably like 2017 or 2018. So I'm hoping that by doing some of these backlist bananas, episodes throughout the year, I can start to make my way through this backlist, you know? But before we do jump into the spinning the wheel and selecting my first book for this video, I did want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is June's Journey. Because June's Journey is a free to download hidden object mystery game with captivating detective stories taking you back to the glamour of the 1920s with a diverse cast of characters. It's really fun and it's really interactive because each new scene that you unlock takes you further into this thrilling murder mystery. We're following our main protagonist, June Parker, and she is on a quest to try and solve the murder of her sister and she also unlocks a lot of family secrets along the way. I really love games like this where you have to find hidden objects because it makes you feel like a detective as you're playing the game as well. I also love the fact that you can customize, remodel, and fix your mansion and garden island. There really is something so relaxing about playing June's Journey at the end of a busy day. You just get to curl up in bed and try to help her solve this mystery together. I really do think if you're a fan of any like whodunit thriller kind of mystery books, I really think you're gonna love this game. And as a huge fan of reading mystery thriller books, I get really excited when I unlock new clues and when I find out more of the story. So you can go ahead and download June's Journey for free by clicking the link down below or you can scan the QR code that's on the screen. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile devices as well as on a PC through Facebook games. Thank you so much to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to the spin the wheel, shall we? All right, so as you can see, I've got the little spin the wheel right here in front of me. I think how I'm going to do this is I'm going to select them one at a time so that I can like keep myself anticipating like what am I gonna read next you know like I feel like I work a lot better and I read a lot faster I've noticed when I don't know what I'm reading next because I am such a planner like I like knowing my plans in advance so to make things harder on myself I'm only going to be choosing one book at a time on this spin the wheel that way it keeps you in suspense too like what am I even gonna be reading in this video we don't know we're gonna find out together so let's go ahead and click to spin I'm so excited and nervous it could be anything it could be literally anything <gasps> Oh my god. Wait. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so stressful. It like changed a few times. Okay, strange weather. <gasps> Wow. Okay, so the first book has been chosen for me to read and it is Strange Weather by Joe Hill. This is actually one that I'm super excited about because this is a horror book that I have had sitting on my TBR for such a long time now. Like it's embarrassing to admit how long this has been sitting on my bookshelf unread. Okay, yeah, so on the back here, it does talk about how this is a collection of four short horror novellas. Look at how cool too, when you flip to the first one, there's like a cool poster in front of the first short story. Like, are they all like that? 
Ooh, yeah, look at that. There's some like artwork throughout this, which I don't know if I ever realized that. Like that is really cool. I think this is such a great pick for me to start off this video with because I always talk about how much I love reading horror novellas. I feel like horror in the short story format can work really well for me sometimes. So I'm really curious to give this one a shot and see if it'll be my thing. I am a little bit nervous because Joe Hill has been a very hit or miss author for me in the past. Mostly miss if I'm being honest. Like I haven't absolutely loved anything from Joe Hill yet, but I've always held out hope for this one because it's novellas. Like I do think authors, sometimes they can thrive in the novella storytelling format. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and maybe I'll update you after I've read the first two short stories. I don't know how much of this I'm gonna be able to read today because I do have quite a bit of video editing that I need to catch up on, but I do have Patreon reading sprints later tonight at five o'clock at night. We're doing some late night sprints. And so hopefully I'll get the chance to start on this book later tonight, but I will update you with thoughts once I have them. Still rough around the edges. I guess that some things never change Can't know that it's been ages But it kind of feels the same No matter how hard you try You cannot push me out So just listen I've been thinking of you Since you broke it and moved to a lake No matter how hard I try You cannot get you out of my system I know we both the same things left to say can you stay a little longer? Can I make you change your mind? Yeah, I know that it's over But can we stay here for a while? Until the everything's alright again Hello, it is much later in the night right now. It's about nine o'clock. I just finished doing some Patreon reading sprints with all of the besties. It was so much fun, but we only sprinted two times in like, I was live for almost four hours. Why could I not shut up? Like, oh my gosh, I was just talking so much, but it was so fun getting to chat with everyone. I also poured myself a pineapple margarita and like, dude, this shit hit me so hard. Like this bottle, it might look small, but it's 10% alcohol. Like this had quite the punch of alcohol in it and I have such a shit tolerance these days. So like, holy shit, just one glass of margarita almost took me out. But anyways, I did want to update you because I have been reading Strange Weather. I finished the first two short stories. I actually read the first short story while I was at the gym earlier this afternoon. And the first short story was about Oh God, I don't know, like 90 pages long. And then this second short story was a little bit longer. And I feel terrible saying this, but I really think that I'm gonna have to DNF this book because there is just something about Joe Hill's writing that I am just not connecting with. And I know that this is a short story collection. So you're probably like, well, why don't you just give the other two a shot? But like, honestly, I am not really excited to pick this book up right now. I was so excited to finish that second short story just to be done with it. The whole point of this video is for me to, you know, read books that have been on my back backlist and then if I'm not enjoying them, like I should just DNF them and unhaul them, right? Like I feel like that's kind of the point with this. The first short story that I read was this story called Snapshot and that one was interesting, I guess. It was the story that followed this like young teenage boy and there's this guy who is this tattooed thug that has this Polaroid instant camera that erases memories. So like anytime he takes a picture of you, you like lose the memory instantly of like that moment happening. I don't know, I feel like the concept for that short story was so cool, but then like the execution of it, like I just didn't care about the characters. I found that the, the story itself, even though it was only 90 pages, it just felt so long. Like it just really dragged out and felt very boring to me. I did like the very end of it and like the way that it wrapped up, it was almost like an emotional thing at the end of it, but because I just didn't care about the characters or anything, it didn't quite get there for me emotionally. And I'd probably give that story like three stars. Like it was decent. I just didn't love the execution of the story. Then this second short story that I just read was called Loaded. And this one's about this Florida mall security guard who stops a mass shooting from happening. This story as well was really hard for me to get into and really hard to connect with. I mean, I don't typically like reading stories that are about mass shootings because I think that's really like scary, but almost in a way that feels very real because like that's just something that happens a lot these days. But then I also feel like in that short story, there was a lot of like heavy handed kind of like 
political, you know, talk with like the gun control and like, you know, the fact that guns can kill people and that guns are really scary. And I appreciate the message. Like I agree with what the author is trying to say about gun control, but it also felt like very heavy handed in a way where I just was like, okay, we get it. And I'm kind of bored. I'm also not connecting with any of the characters in the story. I don't like the way that it's written. I don't know how to explain it. There's just something about his writing style that just doesn't grab me. It just really bores me. And that makes me sad. I think it's just time for me to realize that me and Joe Hill, we just don't vibe. Like his writing style just doesn't really work for me and that's okay. So I really think instead of trying to push myself through these next two short stories, which I know I'm probably not gonna like, I think I'm just gonna save myself the trouble and just unhaul this because clearly it's not for me, but it probably will be for somebody else. So I'll be unhauling this now because the idea of picking up Strange Weather tomorrow is making me not want to read. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of this vlog, I think. I'm gonna spin the wheel now to see what book I can get to read next. Since I will not be reading Strange Weather tomorrow. <laughs> God, please pick something good, please. I need something good. <gasps> oh, oh. Oh my gosh, okay, You Will Know Me. Okay, so the next book that it has selected for me to read is You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott. And this one is a thriller. I know literally next to nothing about this book. I actually bought it at a used bookstore at the end of last year. And I just bought it because it's a thriller and I thought maybe it would be cool to read. I think I remember it saying there's something about gymnastics in this book. So I thought that would be cool to read about gymnastics. I will go ahead and get started on this one tomorrow and I will update you with some thoughts once I have a better idea of what this one's about. Hello, it is the next afternoon. It's a Sunday afternoon. This morning I went out grocery shopping with my sister and it took us like two hours because we went to Costco and Winco. And then ever since getting home, it's been like a really rainy and kind of chill afternoon. I've just been laying in bed reading You Will Know Me and I'm now about 118 pages in and I'm so sorry. I'm about to be so annoying because I think I'm gonna DNF this book too. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I was actually thinking about trying to finish this just just because I didn't want to come on here and be like, I'm gonna DNF another book. But honestly, this year, like in the year of 2024, I am trying my best not to have any like one or two star reads and I just don't feel good about this one. Like I am not clicking with this at all. Do you ever wonder if there's like a reason why some books are on your backlist and why you haven't gotten to them? Because part of me is starting to think that like any books that I'm really genuinely excited about, like I will read them right away, right? So I'm like, maybe there's a reason why these books have been sitting on my shelves for so long because some small part of me was like, I don't know if this will be my thing or I've been pushing it off for like one whatever reason. I don't know, maybe I'm just starting to overthink everything because I'm really not liking this one and it makes me sad. So in this story, this one's like a mystery thriller, I guess. That's about this family that's involved in like the world of gymnastics. I don't know how a book that's about gymnastics is this boring. So we're mainly following from the characters Katie and Eric and then they have this daughter named Devin and she's the one who's like a very promising Olympic athlete in the gymnastics world. But then there's this like shocking death that happens in their very like close-knit gymnastics little community and then like people are starting to question each other they're starting to question if they know who they can trust but it's very much a feeling more like a family drama with these characters who just feel so one-dimensional i don't care about any of these characters i don't care about the parents i don't care about the gymnasts i don't care about any of them. They all just read very one-dimensional to me. I mean, I've never actually read any books by Megan Abbott. I was just looking on Goodreads and almost every single one of her books is rated pretty low on Goodreads. One of the quotes though in this book that I really did like was this quote that said, that was what gymnastics did though. It aged girls and kept them young forever at the same time. I think that's really interesting and that's really thought provoking. And I think a lot of this story is talking about how you have to grow up really quickly when you're doing something like trying to compete in the Olympics and like how cutthroat and intense like the world of gymnastics can be and how much it can take a toll on your body. I also think it's really showing how much parents have to sacrifice if they want their kid to succeed like as a gymnast in the Olympics. It's definitely like a lot of conversations like that, but just the story itself is so boring. It's just so slow. I hate to come on here and like be a negative Nancy because that is the last thing that I want to do. But I also, I just don't see myself pushing through these next 200 pages and then rating this book very high. Like it's just not going to go well for me. So Sadly, it's gonna be a DNF from me. I know you're probably so sick of me right now and I'm so sorry that I DNF'd another book, but I just can't do it. I can't push myself to do it. Okay, if I don't get something good on this next spin, I am gonna be so upset. So let's go ahead and do it. See what we're gonna get. Oh my God, please. I need a win right now. I really do. Ooh. Oh, the dead in the dark. What is that? Let me go look at my bookshelves. Oh, it's this one. 
Dead in the Dark. Oh. Okay, so The Dead in the Dark is one that I'm actually really excited about this. This one is a young adult horror novel. I think it's queer. This is one that I'm actually really curious about. I mean, this one takes place in Oregon. It says teenagers are disappearing, some turning up dead, the weather isn't normal, and all fingers point to TV's most popular ghost hunters who have just come to town. It says we're following this girl named Logan, who is the daughter of TV's Para Spectres. I can't remember if I've read anything from Courtney Gold before or if this one will be my first. I know, I just looked this up on Goodreads and it seems like a lot of my friends on Goodreads have given this four or five stars, so I am very intrigued. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this one next. It is the next afternoon and I wanted to update you because I have started on The Dead in the Dark and I'm now about 150 pages in. I decided to go to the gym this afternoon and I was able to read quite a bit of this while I was just, you know, walking on the treadmill. But so far, I'm happy to update you that I'm actually liking this one quite a bit and I don't feel an urge to DNF it. So things are really looking up if you ask me. <laughs> this one has been really interesting because I feel like young adult horror or young adult mystery thriller books can be very hit or miss for me. But so far, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm really liking the characters. I'm really liking the atmosphere. So basically what's happening in this story is that we're following this young teenage girl named Logan and she is adopted. She has these two gay dads and her two dads, they have this show called Paraspectors where they do like paranormal investigations. And so now they're doing this investigation in this small town called Snakebite in Oregon. But this town is actually a town where her dad was originally from. But this town is not very happy about the fact that her dads are coming back to the town and all of this weird stuff starts happening as soon as her dads are back in the town that the town seems to be blaming them for. Like, for example, there's this young boy named Tristan, and he goes missing. And what's interesting is that Tristan was actually dating this girl named Ashley, and I think Ashley is actually the love interest, like Logan's love interest in the book. So I didn't realize that this would be sapphic as well, because Logan is a lesbian, and she's into this girl Ashley, I think, but it's kind of forbidden because of the fact that Ashley was recently just dating this boy named Tristan who went missing. So there's kind of like a forbidden nature to their relationship in a way. I mean, nothing really has happened between them romantically. There's definitely like a slow burn they have like really great banter with each other and I'm already kind of here for the setup of like the romance between these two girls There's also just this really great atmosphere in this small town Ashley's character like his girlfriend feels like she's seeing his ghost, which is really creepy I love the like weird paranormal elements of this story Something that I'm really liking about this story though is that we are following from both girls perspectives So we get Logan's perspective and then we also do get the perspective of Ashley the love interest So it's interesting that we're going back and forth between their point of views. I really like that I wasn't expecting to get both of theirs. But then something that I'm finding to be a little bit cheesy about the book is that we keep getting these interlude chapters that are like in between the chapters of these girls. And the interlude chapters are so confusing because it's almost like told from the perspective of like the darkness in the town. It doesn't fully make sense and I don't think it's supposed to fully make sense. Like I think it's something that's going to be revealed a little bit later on. But I don't know why I find those chapters like those interludes to be just a little bit like cheesy. Like I don't know if I'm fully on board for these interlude chapters. But you know, I was gonna say that this book, the vibes of it, it definitely reminds me of Saw Kill Girls. Like it has that same exact energy because of the whole like, you know, creepy, paranormal, small town, something is happening. There's a sapphic girl, female, female relationships. It definitely has that like girls going missing in the woods. You feel like somebody's watching you kind of vibe. And if I'm remembering correctly, there was something in Saw Kill Girls too, where it was similar to this, where you're like reading from the perspective of like the darkness or something. I can't 
remember all the details, but this is definitely reminding me a lot of Sock Hill Girls. And Sock Hill Girls, I feel like was one of those books for me that had so much potential, but I think I ended up giving it around three stars overall. So like, I'm hoping that this one could be an improvement over Sock Hill Girls. I just finished up at the gym right now. It's only three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm probably just gonna go home and continue to read this. And then later tonight, I am going to be making dinner for me, Rachel and Obed. I'm gonna be making them my like chicken bacon avocado wraps that I've been really obsessed with lately. Like I've been making these a lot for myself recently. And last time that I made them, I let Rachel try one and she was like, oh shit, like that's actually really good. And I was like, yeah, I know. And so then I offered, I was like, well, if you guys want, I can like make them for all of us tonight. And so I'm gonna be making dinner for everyone tonight. It should be a good time. with another update because I have just finished reading The Dead and the Dark and I'm so happy to report that this one really ended up going well for me for the most part. I mean as far as my like overall rating for this book goes I am a little bit torn over my rating. I think it's gonna be between like a three and a half to a four star. I'm really impressed with how much I ended up enjoying this. The only reason I wouldn't rate this book higher is because I do think towards the end there were some things in the plot that just started to feel a little bit repetitive and I was just like ready for things to get a move on. So I do think some of the pacing was a little bit slow for me at times. I also do wish the romance was just a little bit more developed because I really did like the romance between these characters, Logan and Ashley. I thought they had really cute chemistry and I was definitely here for the romance because I thought the characters were really well done in this book. Like not only Logan and Ashley's characters were really fleshed out, but then also Logan's parents, you know, Brandon and Alejo, like her two dads. I feel like their characters were also really well fleshed out and really interesting. I feel like once everything started to click, when you realize like what's actually going on in this book, I became a lot more invested in the storyline and I really appreciated in like the second half of the book, we started to get some perspectives that I wasn't expecting to get in this book, but I really appreciated it. I still do think, you know, the interlude chapters where we kind of read from the perspective of the darkness, I still do think that those were kind of cheesy and maybe a little bit unnecessary. Like maybe I get why they were there, but it's just not my particular taste in horror to have stuff like that. But I almost felt a little bit of like an emotional pull at the end of this book, which I was surprised by because I didn't think that I was that emotionally invested or that I cared that much, but it turns out that I did. <laughs> I also did see a lot of people, you know, on Goodreads and reviewing this book kind of talking about how they wish that the show was more talked about. And I definitely agree because I feel like even though her dads, they do this TV show called Paraspectors, I feel like I just wanted more information about the show. I feel like they just didn't talk about the show as often as I wanted them to because the story was definitely more about, you know, like this small town and like trying to figure out what was going on and what was this darkness and why were these kids disappearing. I am so glad though that I ended up enjoying this one more than I enjoyed Sock Hill Girls because I do think they are very similar and I would recommend them like hand in hand. Like if you liked one, you'd probably like the other. But I do think that for me personally, this one suits my taste a little bit more than Sock Hill Girls did. And I definitely connected a lot more with the characters in this one than I did with Sock Hill Girls. So that is exciting. I was actually confused too because I thought I had heard of this author, Courtney Gold, before, but this one's actually her debut novel, and this one came out in 2021, I think, and since then she's published two more novels, I'm pretty sure, so I'm definitely curious to check out her other stuff. I'm so glad that The Wheel chose this book for me to read, because I genuinely don't know, like, how soon or if I would have ever gone around to this book. All right, so we are going to go ahead and spin for the next book and see what it's gonna give us. <sighs> I always get so nervous. What is it gonna choose for me? <gasps> Dude, no fucking way. No fucking way. Okay, I was just saying earlier this month, I was doing another reading vlog and I was debating reading The Other Side of Night for that reading vlog. And I was like, well, maybe if the universe is on our side, I can read it during the Backless Bonanza vlog. But like, I didn't think it was actually gonna happen. <gasps> 
Okay, I am back. I have got the book, The Other Side of Night by Adam Hamdi. This is a book that came out at the end of 2022. I actually still have the ARC copy for it because I just never got around to reading it, even though I've been wanting to read this for such a long time. I have heard a lot of really great things about this book from my friends over the years. Like I'm pretty sure Kayla over from Books and Lala gave this five stars. I think my friend Matt also gave it five stars. There's just been a lot of people over the years that have told me they really think that I would like this. And so I'm so excited that I got the chance to read this for this video like oh my gosh what are the chances the universe really just said yes the universe said you need to read this one that is so exciting so i'm gonna go ahead and get started on this one tomorrow it's so annoying in the morning i'm gonna have to go and get my car oil changed and so i figured while i'm doing all of the annoying adulting tasks tomorrow i can just get started on this one afternoon. I wanted to update you because I am back home and I've been reading The Other Side of Night. Earlier today, I did end up going to get my car oil changed and they were able to do it so fast. Like I was in and out of there within like 30 minutes. And so after that, I ended up going to the local bookstore, not because I was looking for a book, even though I was kind of browsing around just trying to see if I could find anything, but I decided not to get anything. I was actually there today because I wanted to get a gift card for one of my friends, like her birthday is coming up soon. And I wanted to bring her a gift card because she's also a reader. So I got that and then after coming home, I've just been sitting here reading The Other Side of Night. I'm now 114 pages in. I'm about 40% of the way through the audiobook and this has been really interesting so far. So what's really interesting is that this book starts with a chapter that's told from this guy named David and he's kind of writing about the sudden separation from his son and how it's like one of his biggest regrets and like how much he loves his son. But then almost immediately after that, we start following this character named Harry who is a former former police officer and she's talking to this elderly man when he drops his book and so she decides to like take this book and the book is called Happiness A New Way of Life and it's kind of like a book that is a non-fiction book that's talking about happiness in your life and what's interesting is that on the side of the book like in the margins written in the book there's help he's trying to kill me and so she's trying to figure out like who this book had belonged to before this old man so she like takes the book to the library and she has the librarians like help her see who who had checked it out the most recently and she discovers that this book was checked out recently by this woman named Beth who has recently died of cancer in the last six months but what's weird about the situation is that she had died of cancer six months ago and then her husband shortly after that committed suicide by like jumping off this cliff and so she starts to wonder like did Beth leave the note in the book of like he's trying to kill me like her husband who had committed suicide so like was there some kind of situation with her death like maybe she actually didn't die from the cancer like was there another way that she died and they just don't know and so it's really interesting because the guy who wrote that letter to his son at the beginning he was the one who committed suicide and I don't know so far in this story we've only been following Harry's perspective for the most part so we've been following from her perspective as she's trying to like investigate what's going on but she's also like a former police officer like she's not currently active and we don't know exactly what's happened in Harriet's past 
to make her not be an active police officer. It just said she had a lapse in judgment. So I'm guessing like something bad happened and she lost her ability to be a police officer. But so far I'm finding this book to be really interesting and really well written. There's also like a side romance kind of story happening between Harriet and this guy Ben. And Ben seems like he has a really interesting connection to these people in this story in a way that's making it uncomfortable for her because this guy Ben was a guy that she dated about a year ago and she was really in love with him and then they broke off on kind of like messy terms and now she's starting to suspect that he might be actually involved in like whatever's going on with these people. So he might be connected to the case in a really interesting way. Like, I don't know, I really like the way that this author's setting up all of these characters. I'm also really loving in this book the discussion about like happiness and like what truly makes us happy. This author actually included some quotes from that book, Happiness, A New Way of Life in this book. Like when they said, why aren't you happy? Because you don't have the woman you want or the man, the job, the house, the car. Have you lost someone that you love? And they said, does happiness even exist? Can you laugh during the bleakest moments? Of course, but would you describe yourself as happy? And when you are at your most content, would you describe yourself as happy in the common meaning of the word? Or are you simply at peace, free of desire, untroubled by longing? I don't know. I really like uh, the way that this book is talking about happiness and the way that this character is like talking about her life and wondering if she's happy. And even if she had this guy, Ben, that she very strongly desires, it's like, will that really make her happy? Is it her job that makes her happy? I just think it's really beautiful. I don't know. It's really well written. I'm really connecting with it so far. I've also been hearing that this book just has an absolutely insane plot twist towards the end that you will not be able to see coming. So that definitely has me excited. I don't want to say that this has five star energy so far because I don't want to jinx it, but I also think this might have some five star energy for me so far. So I'm just going to sit here and continue reading. I do have quite a bit remaining. I mean, this book is only about 280 pages, so it's not very long. It's only two o'clock in the afternoon afternoon right now so I think I'm just gonna continue with this and I will update you with thoughts once I have them finish the book or did the book finish me <laughs> just finished the other side of night and like <sighs> five stars five fucking stars look at all these tabs like look at these tabs what the heck <laughs> the dark purple ones are for the plot twist that i did not see coming because i'm a freaking idiot but then also i have some of the dark blue tabs because some of the ending almost made me emotional like i was on the verge of tears several times i don't know what it was about this writing style but i really emotionally connected with these characters i thought this book was so beautifully written and i will warn you that if you're interested in reading this book do not look this book up on Goodreads because I genuinely think even one of the genre tags on Goodreads is kind of a spoiler for this book. So do not spoil yourself. If you want to read this book, I would highly recommend just jumping in absolutely blind and not knowing anything other than that it's a mystery thriller. But I would also only recommend this to people who don't mind a kind of chaotic, unexpected, hard to believe ending where like things don't really make a lot of sense. Because I was looking on Goodreads and like the average rating for this book right now is like a three 3.5 which is pretty low and I was like why is it so low and then I realized I remembered it's because people don't like endings that like don't make sense <laughs> and like this book oh my god the ending so I'm sitting there like trying to record myself because I had I had heard that this book has like a crazy ending right so I got to the first plot twist and I was like oh shit like that's cool I didn't see it coming and I thought maybe that was it and then I was like oh wait there was like another twist right after that that I didn't see coming and then I was like wait there was a third twist that I did not see coming like what the fuck? I think even if you do figure out, you know, some spoiler for this book, like even if you've been spoiled for like a genre or something like that about this book, I still think 
that you will be shocked by something at the end of this book. And this is definitely one of those books where I feel like you could reread this book and have a completely different experience once you know certain things about the ending of this book. I love when a book can do that. Like I love when you can go back and have a completely new experience rereading it now that you know certain things. Gosh, I wasn't expecting this book to be so hard hitting. Like the way that this book talks about grief, it was so beautiful and so well done. Like it literally moved me to tears. I feel like this is one of those really like thought provoking, well written novels that just makes you think about life. I mean, I did see on Goodreads that this book actually did say perfect for fans of Matt Haig, which is something I would also definitely agree with. The writing in this definitely reminded me a lot of Matt Haig, who's written some of my favorite books of all time, including The Midnight Library and The Humans. But yeah, oh my gosh, the way that this book talked about grief and like happiness and like the full spectrum of emotions, it was just stunning. I love this quote that says, I railed against a universe that could be so cruel. Were we so important that our happiness had to be stolen? Could we not have gone unnoticed by fate? We were insignificant creatures whose existence was of no consequences to gods or man. What had we done to deserve this? Even as those anguished thoughts overwhelmed me, I knew how pointless they were. Our insignificance was the very reason fate was blind to our happiness. That was just one of those things. One of those terrible, ugly, brutal things. It is what it is, says the gods, and the universe shrugs and moves on. There were just so many, you know, beautiful quotes in this book about what it's like to lose someone you love. And I think that's why I emotionally connected with it so much, because I thought that was so beautifully done. I was not expecting to get so emotionally attached, especially because I do think the beginning is pretty slow. Like the first 150 pages of or so. I mean, I connected with the characters right away, but I can definitely see how people are saying, oh, the beginning is so slow and like nothing happens. It definitely takes a long time to set up this story, but once you get to the ending, dude, oh my gosh, the ending is just packed full of shocking surprises. Oh, it just feels so good. You know, especially after the first few failures that I had at the beginning of this video, it feels so good to read something like this, which reminds me why I love reading in the first place. And this gives me a lot of hope for the future of this like backlist bonanza vlog series that I'm trying to do this year, because there is a chance that I have books that have been sitting on my shelves for years that I could give five stars. All right, so I've finished two books for this video. I'm gonna be spinning one last time. Let's see what the universe has decided for us. Why is it glitching? Oh, 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 oh shit. Okay, I, I really thought it was gonna go up to Keiju, but it's Off the Deep End. We have Off the Deep End by Lucinda Berry. This one is another thriller. I'm so excited because this is one that I've been wanting to read for such a long time. I think I've only read one book from Lucinda Berry so far, and it was The Perfect Child, which I think I ended up giving that one like four stars. I really enjoyed it. And this one seems a little bit on the shorter side. It's about 250 pages. So I feel like I'll have no trouble being able to get through this. So let's do it. I'm so excited to be reading another thriller for this video. Let's go. to film a quick update because I have started reading Off the Deep End by Lucinda Berry. I was just doing some Patreon reading sprints this morning. I was actually live for like more than four hours and I was only able to read up to 78 pages because I kept getting so distracted today. But so far, this has been interesting. Um, we're following this character named Jules and basically she's in a car wreck. 
she's driving her car down the road when she swerves off the road and goes into like a bunch of icy water and then when she's in the water like in the car with her is her son Gabe and then his friend Isaac there's like these two teenage boys right and so when she's in the water she's like frantically trying to grab her son and she can't see anything because it's like dark and she feels like somebody grab her wrist so she grabs him and like pulls him out and then she realizes that the kid that she saved was Isaac like it wasn't her son it was the other boy and so she's really upset she jumps back in trying to save her son Gabe but Gabe is dead like there's no saving him he's gone and so then you know she's going through a really hard time and now we flash forward to 10 months later after this accident happened and now this young boy Isaac has gone missing and so she is like prime suspect number one because the family had actually just gotten a restraining order against her one week before the boy went missing it's really sad, you know, because Jules, you know, her character is really going through it because of the loss of her son, you know, like she is very like violent. She's very angry. She's suicidal. She's like not having a great time mentally. And so they think that she might have been capable of like harming, you know, this young boy, Isaac, even though she ended up saving him accidentally instead of her son. But what's also interesting is that there's been this serial killer kind of going around their small town that has been taking these teenage boys, like when they're out walking their dogs, he also went out walking their dog and then the dog just got loose and came back and they realized that he went missing while he was walking the dog much like the other victims of the serial killer so it's kind of this thing where the author's trying to like throw you off like could it be Jules like did something happen with her or was it actually because of the serial killer that's like in their town like you don't know but like oh my goodness okay I'm only 78 pages in but this book has been messy so far and I don't know if I mean that in a good way or a bad way it's just kind of like oh oh shit it's just kind of like icky to read if that makes sense like there's something happening in the plot where I'm like, oh God, like that is truly um, disturbing. It's a little bit uncomfortable to be reading, but I'm also invested because I want to see where it goes. I feel like this is one of those thrillers where like once you get into it, it just absolutely flies. Like it is very basic in a way like I don't mean that in a bad way but you know what I mean it's one of those like popcorn thrillers it's like a thriller that just reads very quickly it's very easy to read the language that is used is very basic it's just simple it's easy to get into it's easy to get hooked which is exactly what I need right now kind of like I need a book that doesn't take too much brain power to read and this is definitely giving me that <laughs> I think we're probably gonna make dinner here in about an hour I'm really excited I'm gonna try to make like a fettuccine pasta chicken kind of thing and then we're gonna make a really good Caesar salad we're also probably gonna watch the Caesar Season 2 finale of The Traitors tonight, which I'm also really looking forward to. How's it going? It is the next morning. So last night we did end up watching the season finale of The Traitors, which was very interesting. I thought the finale was actually pretty great. Like I thought it wasn't gonna be that interesting and it ended up being pretty good. I also made an absolutely incredible dinner last night. Like that chicken pasta with the bacon. Oh my gosh, it was so good. I actually got up to page 172. Like I made decent progress and I was gonna try to finish this last night, but I just got kind of bored. Like I'm really bored where we're at in the story right now. I'm not gonna lie. You know, at the beginning I felt like like the writing was like kind of cheesy maybe and kind of basic but I was still having a fun time and now we've gotten to the point in the book where like I'm not having a fun time anymore <laughs> I just feel like it's kind of boring right now it's kind of slow I feel like the pacing of the book it's really starting to drag you know because I really enjoyed the setup of this book with like these characters and like what actually happened to this boy and now I feel like we've gotten to the point in the book where it's just so back and forth between these two women just being catty to each other and I just feel like the story's not progressing very much I feel like every chapter it's just like more of the same shit right now so I'm kind of hoping for things to pick up. I mean, I have less than 100 pages left. I decided though that to finish this, I wanted to come out to one of the local coffee shops today and try to read this in the coffee shop because I keep getting so distracted when I'm trying to read at the apartment recently. So hopefully I'll be able to finish this no problem this afternoon. I also, like last night, another reason why I was like, yeah, I don't have time to read this right now is because Ariana Grande dropped her new album last night, which like, I'm not the 
biggest Ariana Grande fan. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've liked a lot of her music in the past, but she's never been an artist that I'm like, oh my god, new music! Even though I didn't care too much for her single, Yes And, I thought it was okay, but I just really wanted to hear what the new album was gonna sound like, and I'm so glad that I listened to it last night. I like it way more than I thought that I would. I think I actually saved six out of the 13 songs, which is like pretty good for me for an Ariana Grande album. I'm obsessed, like I'm currently obsessed with the song Eternal Sunshine. Oh my gosh, what a freaking banger. And then Supernatural, I'm obsessed. We can't be friends, I'm obsessed. Dude, that song sounds like it has some like 1989 production or something. I know this album was actually produced by Max Martin, who was the producer of 1989 back in 2014. So like, it kind of makes sense that it has that sound to it. But I also really love Imperfect For You, Ordinary Things. There are just so many good ones on this album. I am absolutely shocked. Like this album is so good. So this one has easily become my new favorite Ariana Grande album. So instead of obsessively listening to this album all day today, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go in the coffee shop and try to finish this one up. <laughs> we don't care if it's only a dream. Nothing is really what it seems anyway. I finished reading off the deep end. I was getting a little shy about filming in there because right when I went in, there was like nobody in there and I was like, sweet. But then shortly after, like 10 minutes later, it got so crowded in that coffee shop and I was like, ugh. I still get embarrassed sometimes about filming in public like because my camera's so big, you know, like I have a huge Canon camera that I take everywhere with me. <laughs> but anyways, um, this book, dude, <laughs> what the fuck was this? <laughs> this feels like a book that had potential and then it turned into like such a hot mess and it definitely got a lot darker towards the end than I was expecting it to. It was a little bit uncomfortable to read. I feel like this entire story was very uncomfortable to read, but I also feel like the pacing in the middle, it definitely started to drag. Oh my gosh, like it got so boring and repetitive. And then too, this book was starting to do the thing that would annoy me where like something gets revealed to us in one chapter as like the reader. And then in the next chapter, it would be like the characters revealing it to each other. And we'd just like be reading the same things that we just read about. It was just poor writing, I guess, you know? Like, I feel like we could have found out the information as the characters were revealing it to each other and it would have been more impactful and more powerful. But I also am just like, oh my gosh, dude, some of the things that happened in this book, I'm like, what? But also the ending. I don't want to spoil anything about the ending, so I won't say anything, but I just, I wasn't a fan of the way that this book ended. I actually did think now might be a good time to jump into some spoilers for this because there are just some things that I have to warn you about because I do feel like this book has a lot of trigger warnings that might be, like, like sensitive things for people to read that I think maybe you should know about before you read this. But I also just feel like I have to talk about some spoilers with this book because what the heck was this? So I'll put a spoiler warning on the screen for the duration of time that I'm going to be talking about this. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you can just skip ahead a few seconds if you'd like. The majority of this story, which I didn't realize when I was going to start this, but the majority of the story is about this relationship between this 41-year-old woman and the 15-year-old boy. The boy, that's her son's best friend that she like saved accidentally instead of saving her son. Yeah, it turns out they had a relationship together and she keeps emphasizing that like it's not romantic and it's not sexual and their relationship's not like that, but they have this like deep connection. Their relationship made me so uncomfortable to read. And then it's still like at the end of the book, which this is like a major spoiler by the way, but at the end of the book, she's literally pregnant with his baby. And then she even says like, oh, well, we didn't have sex. Like that's not how I got pregnant. And she goes on to explain how she like, was gonna help him with something and he was he decided to help her in return so the way that he was helping her in return was that he was gonna like give her his sperm to use however she wanted to and she like used it in herself like they never had actual intercourse but she still took his sperm which i'm sorry that just feels so inappropriate it feels so disgusting and i don't like how the story ended on a good note for her like she was getting a second chance at love and like no dude like she totally groomed this 15 year old boy that's disgusting that was your son's best friend like ew gross i mean she definitely got like jail time or she got punishment for all the things that she did to this boy, but I don't like that the way this book ends with, what's that saying about second chances at love? Oh yeah, sometimes life gives you a second chance at love because you weren't ready for it the first time. That one there is my favorite. Like, I'm sorry, a second chance at love because you weren't ready for it the first time? No, because he was a minor. What? <laughs> And then also in the second half of this book, there's this whole storyline with like a school shooting, which is also something I was not expecting. I was like, holy shit, this is so much darker than I thought it would be because it turns out the boy Isaac 
And this is another major spoiler, by the way, so fast forward if you don't want to hear spoilers. But it turns out that this boy Isaac, you know, the one who's missing this entire book, it turns out he was just hanging out at a friend's house the whole time because he was getting ready to go and shoot up the whole school because he was suicidal after this thing had happened to him and he didn't want to live anymore. So he decided with like one of his friends that they both wanted to go and shoot up the school and like go on this suicide mission. Holy shit, the school shooting thing kind of came out of nowhere for me. I feel like it was a plot twist that I didn't really see coming, but like, I don't really want to read about that. Like that just, uh, it makes my stomach turn. I don't know. I just wasn't a huge fan of the like school shooter reveal and the fact that he was like actually evil and like planning on killing other kids the whole time. I feel like this book also wasted a lot of time, especially in the middle of this book with like these two moms just like going at each other's throats, which like understandably in a way, right? Because the mother finds out that like her 15 year old son is having a relationship with this 41 year old woman. And like this 41 year old woman is obsessed with him. Like, don't get it twisted. They had to give her a restraining order against her because she's like crazy. She's like going over to the house. She's like sending him fucking her hair in the mail. Like, you know, she is full blown obsessed with this 15 year old boy. And she thinks that they have like this unspoken connection thing together. And so of course the mom is going to get a restraining order against her. But of course, when the boy goes missing, they think like she's suspect number one because she's, you know, so obsessed with him. But it's like so much of this book, like literally so many chapters in the middle are just about these two moms going back and forth with each other being like, I know you were involved in like trying to meddle with the case. I don't know. This just wasn't really for me. It wasn't really what I was expecting it to be. I'm probably going to end up giving this two stars. Like, I don't know. I don't see myself rating this any higher because it started off interesting enough. Like it started off with an interesting setup and I really liked the setup of it. But after the first like hundred pages or so, I feel like it really started to drag. And then the ending for me was just not satisfying at all. But anyways, that's a wrap on Off the Deep End. I don't know if Lucinda Berry is like the author for me. I've heard that her book Saving Noah is like maybe her most well-known one. <laughs> but now I don't know if I have any interest in reading it, to be honest. Like, I, I just don't really know if I click with her writing style, with her characters. Her writing style almost reminds me of, you know, like Frida McFadden or like Kirsten Modlin or like those authors that just have like really easy to read popcorn thrillers. Like they read very quick, but they're usually like not that shocking. Like I feel like with these kind of books, I never rate them anything higher than three stars. So like, I don't know, but you'll have to let me know if you enjoy any other books from Lucinda Berry. Let me know if there's any other ones that you think I could enjoy. But yeah, wow, that is a wrap on this reading vlog. Thank you so much for joining, even though it was kind of a messy time. I'm not gonna lie, this vlog was pretty chaotic <laughs> because I DNF'd a few things. I didn't enjoy some other things, but I also had a five star. Like the other side of the night was definitely a five star new favorite for me. So like, that's cool. I'm definitely planning on doing another episode of the backlist bonanza sometime in the future. Like, I don't know how soon I'm going to get to it, but let me know if you do like the added element of the like spin the wheel. And if that's something you want to see me include in future episodes of the backlist bonanza series. And of course, if you've read any of the books that I read for this video, then please let me know your thoughts on them down in the comments below. And also don't forget to check out June's journey, especially if you are like a mystery thriller type of person. I really think you could enjoy this game. It's so much fun. It has all the glamour of the 1920s. It's just a really fun time and I think it's totally worth to check out, especially because it's free to download. So like, why not? But thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Bye.